Hare Krishna. So today is uh, the disappearance of Srinivas Acharya, who is one of the great devotees of, uh, of Lord Chaitanya, following maybe one or two generations <coughs> after. And so when it's the day of an appearance, appearance or disappearance of one of our great saints, it's, it's recommended you know, to really pray to them. And I remember when I was in Vrindavan, maybe 10... When I was in Vrindavan about 10 years ago, I remember um, we were at the, uh, the temple of, uh, of Narottam Das Thakur, another great saint in our tradition, and it was the day of his disappearance day. Some translation. So I'll speak slowly, huh? So about ten years ago we were in Vrindavan. Okay, please. And uh, it was it was the birthday of of Narottam Das Thakur, a great saint in our tradition. And um, okay, and, and I remember there was there was one, one famous sannyasi in his call. His name is uh, um, Danudar Swami, and I remember he mentioned he gave this analogy, which I'll always remember. That on the appearance or disappearance day of our great saints or great saints in general, but particularly in the bhakti yoga tradition, it's like. Uh, Okay, it's like there's there's channels that open directly from us to these saints and vice versa. Yeah, portal exactly. And their mercy, you know, we we believe that the mercy of great saints is always available to us. But, but. On you know the days of their birthday or the day when they passed away, their mercy is even more accessible. In the Vedic tradition, you usually you know access previous saints' mercy via your immediate spiritual guide or guides, right? Your guru, your gurus. But on the appearance or disappearance days they're accessible directly uh, to uh, to illustrate this point to illustrate this point i could refer to a, a story of, of of prabhupada when it was uh, the birthday of his spiritual teacher bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur he he mentioned in one of his lectures that today you know you can ask the mercy of my spiritual teacher, of your grandfather's spiritual teacher, you don't have to go through me, you can access him directly. So today, uh, we can especially pray for the mercy of, of Srinivas Acharya. And also Dana, uh, Gadadar Das Pandit. And Dananjai Pandit. <laughs> These are all uh, associates of Lord Chaitanya. And uh, if I may tell a quick story before talking about Justin Bieber and Sean Mendes, I'd like to tell a short story of Srinivas Acharya, which I mentioned last week. He was a disciple, uh, his disciple was one of his close friends and disciples was Ramachandra Kaviraj, correct? And, right, and and so there's a story where I won't get into all the details, but the point is, Srinivas Acharya showed how how well he perfectly knew 
his eternal spiritual identity in the kingdom of God. He revealed to the world through his own writings and through biographies <coughs> what was his eternal position in relationship to, to Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world. Mm. So, um, anyway, we could spend a long time speaking about Srinivasacharya and, and Dhananjay Pandit. And, but what we can do is, is, is pray for their mercy. And, and what should we pray for? We should pray that they bless us with, with pure devotion. With pure devotion. You know, our mood should be whatever I'm supposed to get by destiny's arrangement. Let that come, you know, good or bad, relatively speaking. And, uh, and I'll be there to accept that good or bad, you know, results of my past deeds. But may I always be able to glorify and to think and to serve you, my Lord. Yeah. That should be our prayer. And so these great saints, we believe, had or have this great treasure of selfless, pure devotion. This, this pure devotion which is free of speculation about what is God, maybe God is this, maybe God is that. And it's free also of, of being attached to the fruit of our activities. Pure, pure devotion to God is free of these two unfavorable elements. Pure devotion. And, and so, so, you know, we, that's our goal. We want that. Right? But we are always being <laughs> dragged <laughs> by, by jnana and karma, as we say in Sanskrit. <laughs> and so with the help, with the help of these great souls, you know, we can, we can move towards the, the goal with, with their support and their help and their blessings. And I recommend, if you have, it's very easy online to get the calendar of the, you know, it's called the Vaishnava calendar. You know, and you set up the city, Zagreb. And then, you know, you, get, you see, oh, okay, next week is Radhastami or Janastami, the birthday of Radharani, the birthday of Krishna. Oh, next week is just like, you know, a few days ago we celebrated the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada. And like that, throughout the year, there's all these appearances and disappearances of great saints of the Bhakti tradition. And, 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 and therefore, if we know when it's coming in a few days, especially on the day itself, you know, we can just spend a little, even a little time praying to them, remembering their name, looking up some facts about them online, you know, with Google Translate, easy, even in Croatian, if you don't know English, and get their blessings, and get their blessings. So, with their blessing, I just want to take a little bit more of your time and, and speak about... Actually, I was going to speak about the famous uh, French democracy, you know, motto, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité. You, you've heard of that? You know, because it's, it's kind of inspired all the democracies of the world. The, Liberté, égalité, fraternité, and give a, a bhakti yoga or Bhagavad Gita, you know, twist to it. And as a matter of fact, I could still do it. But a half hour ago, when Sundarananda came into his room, he saw me, and I was in the middle of 
uh, preparing to make a reaction video on my YouTube channel about a new song that came out two days ago, a collaboration between Shawn Mendes and Justin Bieber. And if you don't know who Justin Bieber is or Shawn Mendes, then you know, we could joke and say you're really missing out on life. But not necessarily. You know, yeah, this is a short, funny story, you know, about about the 50, you know, 50% of your life is spoiled. You heard this story, it's a good story to tell. Prabhupada would often tell this story where you have, and it's got a really good deep lesson. You have this British colonial man um, who's going to Bangladesh in the villages and he's hiring a boatman to go from one village to the other. And, and so, you know, he's, he's got a PhD from Cambridge University, you know. And the boatman is just an illiterate, simple boatman from, from Bangladesh. And so during the ride, the, 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 the British academic says, Hey, boatman. And then he said, said, Do you know anything about social psychology? And the man says, uh, No, sir, I don't. And he says, oh, 25% of your life is spoiled. And then like a half hour later, a hey, boatman! It's wasted. Not, wasted? Yeah, not spoiled, but wasted. Wasted. Hey boatman, yes sir. Do you know anything about, you know, anthropology? Yes. No sir, I don't know what is anthropology. Hey, 50% of your life is wasted. And then, and then, you know, one more time, like, hey boatman, yes sir. Do you know anything about biomolecular chemistry? He says, no sir, I don't. 75% of your life is wasted. And then all of a sudden there's a big storm. And there's rain and the river level goes up and it's just and, and the boat is getting filled with water and the boat is starting to sink. And and so the boatman says, Sir, 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 do you know how to swim? You know, I'm sorry if I'm making fun of the Bangladeshi accent. He says, Sir, do you know how to swim? And the man says, No, I don't know how to swim. And he says, Sir. 100% of your life is wasted. <laughs> right? So, in, in the circle of, of the Hare Krishna movement, we sometimes make this joke, oh, 50% of your life is wasted. You know? Just like today, I, I sent a song from 1986 by Michael Jackson called uh, Somebody's Watching Me. And, you know, very obscure. He wrote it, but he didn't even sing it. This guy called Rockwell sang it. So I sent it to a friend and said, do you know this song? He says, no, I don't know this song. Oh, I said, 50% of your life is wasted. Obviously, it's not, right? So anyway, coming back to Justin Bieber, Shawn Mendes, they came out with this song two days ago. It already has 20 million views. It's called Monster. And the lyrics, not only is it a really cool song, like, if you like pop, Music, it's super well produced, obviously, you know, by multi-million dollar producers. But it's got these amazing God-conscious lyrics. Like, very impressive. It's, it's not even in the Christian rock genre. You know, you've got Christian rock music, which is a small but, you know, quite big. It makes the bhakti yoga music scene, you know, microscopic. But this is like in the mainstream pop genre and they have like very spiritual lyrics <laughs> so Sundarananda said well why don't you speak about those instead uh, no you didn't tell me that you had already prepared otherwise I would that, and I wouldn't say well it's up to you <laughs> you, you, you all decide I'm, yes. I'm your servant uh, would you prefer do you prefer the Shawn Mendes and, and Justin T Bieber analysis or the you know Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité analysis I'm for uh, that's the you're, you're for which one? <laughs> the liberté, égalité, fraternité? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neutral? Uh, neutral we oh, you're about the video. We will no, see that on the video. 
You like the Justin Bieber? We will watch your video. We can watch Justin Bieber. We will watch your video later. Okay. We are interested in... Sorry, sorry Justin. I tried. Okay, so here's the Krishna conscious interpretation of liberté, égalité, fraternité. So we'll just look at those three things. The concept of liberté, égalité, and fraternité. What is égalité? Equality. Yeah. Uh, equality. Equality. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so we'll 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 impose or we'll we'll put on these three concepts, you know, the 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 Vedic the Vedic understanding, let's say, the Vedic interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. He said that in former Yugoslavia we had political system which is higher than this because he said uh, brotherhood and uh, equality but he said we had brotherhood and uh, unity unity yeah yeah that doesn't exist in France <laughs> <laughs> it's true obviously right? here also <laughs> yeah yeah kind of true okay so you know, and they're saying like what, among like academics, there's this, there's this one theory that once a piece of art, or a song, or some book is published or out from the hands of the creator, then the interpret the meaning of that thing is up for grabs. In other words, it's no longer the proprietor. You know, the meaning that the author intended is important, but you know, it's not like he has the monopoly of it. So. I don't think that you know the founders of the of the Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité were you know thinking of Krishna and the Srimad Bhagavatam yeah. and Bhagavad Gita yeah. when they when they wrote this, but uh, we'll do it anyway. So Liberté, freedom, freedom, Liberté. So one way to look at this notion of Liberté is not only you know political freedom, not only uh, freedom of speech. Or you know human rights, which of course is being quite discussed right now with this whole, you know, quarantine and political takeover of, of the COVID nineteen pandemic, and you know individual liberties are being very much <coughs> eaten upon. So we could talk about that, like the you know political freedom, but from a spiritual point of view. We want to talk about freedom, ultimately, from samsara. Freedom from, from having to incarnate in a body again and again and again and again and again. We want to talk about freedom, you know, in this life, freedom from the influence of what Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita as the three modes of material nature. Right? Mode of ignorance, mode of passion, mode of goodness. You've heard of these, right? We all know about these modes. And for those who don't know, these modes or these qualities are exactly that. They're... Uh, they're influences, cosmic influences that influence our character, our desires, our motivations, the kind of clothes we wear, you know, how our lifestyle, different kinds of vegetables and fruits, different kinds of food in general, the different times of the day, you know, even world views about how someone sees other people and the world. Depending on the influence of a combination of one or two or three of these modes of nature, we get different kind of people and things and behaviors. And we believe that essentially we're souls, right? We are souls, aham brahmasmi. We are spirit souls inside 
physical body machines, which we are not. And, and, and because of, of false ego and the influence of the illusion, the illusory energy of God, you know, based on our desire originally, we, we identify with this machine. And we think, you know, I'm French, or I'm American, I'm Croatian, I'm a woman, I'm a man, I'm fat, I'm thin, I'm Republican, I'm, I'm Democrat, you know, I, 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 I'm homosexual, I'm lesbian, I'm straight, etc. Itakodali, 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 itakodali. Thank my mom for that one. And, and, <laughs> and along with this false identification with the body is these influences, these modes of nature. And, and they're, com they're, they're compared to infections. They're compared to infections. Like, you know, you infect a virus. We talk about, you know, getting infected by COVID-19. And, you know, we pray we don't get infected by COVID-19. But the three modes of nature can be compared to infections. And, and, and once we infect, you know, the mode of passion, then our behavior, our worldview is influenced. It's just like, you know, a glass that's green and you have white light that goes through it and the light on the other side is green light or brown light or blue light. But we, we purely, you know, in our pure state, we're, you know, to use the analogy, we're just white light. It's, you know, we have a swarup. We, we believe the soul has a form. But just to use the analogy of the light, our... We as conscious beings are pure, are free of the three modes of nature. And, and that's what it means to say transcendental. Transcendental to what? You know, to transcending what? Transcending the three modes of nature. So in this liberté, we could really talk about the highest meaning of liberté is a freedom in this body, in this life, from the influence of these three modes. Even while we have a family, even while we have a career, even while we have, you know, responsibilities in society, in the world, that we do our best. But still, we're like, you know, lotus, they, they say the lotus flower is in the water, but it's not touching the water. Or Jesus Christ used to say, you know, you're in this world, but not of this world. So real freedom is in this life to, to be God conscious. That's freedom. And ultimately, if we're God conscious, then we conquer over birth and death. We conquer over reincarnation. Liberté. So that's liberté. Et liberté, now, égalité. Equality. We've seen in human history attempts at material equality. Through, for example, what's the best example? It's the, communi the communist regime. Right? Where a government, you know, imposes the same everything to everybody. There is a, you know, the book by George Orwell, 1984. He wrote his other book called um, Animal Farm. And, and among the animals, the, you know, the leaders, they say, you know, everybody's equal, but some are more equal than others. <laughs> Right? And so it, it's undeniable that on the material platform there is no equality. That's just how this world is made. There never was, there is, and there never will be material equality. Somebody is more beautiful than somebody else. Somebody is more intelligent than somebody else. 
Somebody is a better basketball player than somebody else. Somebody is a better musician than somebody else. Itakodali, itakodali, itakodali. And, 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 and inequality and therefore variety is just a, f a building block of material reality. Variety. Uh, variety, material variety, which includes differences and therefore not full equality, is, is a foundation of, of, of this world. Right? And it's interesting, you find more and more, you, if you observe society and you look at futuristic movies, you know, where in the future there's less and less differences, for example, between men and women. Or between rich and poor, like everybody's sort of trying to become, you know, just one generic humanoid. Yeah, some sort of yeah, and all like you you see like for example you know people are so like you see the intention the intention to to bring equality and to stop racism to stop you know uh, sexism and in these to stop speciesism that's great these are these are great intentions but if you don't have a if you don't have the the spiritual knowledge as the solution to these problems then you don't really escape the problem right because by definition on the material platform there is inequality there is difference so when we hear egalité the only possible egalité that we can speak of is metaphysical equality. Metaphysical. And that's why the, the Declaration of Independence in America, Thomas Jefferson, etc. They wrote, you know, we declare that, uh, that all men are created equal. So that obviously is the same idea of equality. It has to be a, a metaphysical equality. So metaphysically, every person and therefore every soul is 100% equal. 100% equal. In the eyes of God, every soul has equal value. And here is where Bhagavad Gita, I think, really uh, triumphs over many worldviews of the world. Because now we're talking about spiritual equality, not just among human beings, but among animals also. And plants, and everything that's conscious. And, and here, allow me to quote one famous verse from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 5, verse 18. Which speaks about the, the spiritual vision of someone who is God-conscious. And this is the kind of vision, you know, you, you should pray to have. Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavihashtini Shuni Chaiva Svapake Cha Pandita Samadarshina that a wise person, a spiritually awake person, sees with what's called samadarshina, equal vision. Equal vision. You're okay? Yeah. Time? Oh, well, this verse from Bhagavad Gita, 518, equal vision. Uh, that a spiritualist yeah. Uh, yeah, sees with equal vision. And what does he or she see? All kinds of human beings, from the most, you know, let's say, educated and learned and gentle and clean, to the lowest, you know, most, let's say, maybe degraded, uh, barbaric, 
i tako dalje. He or she, she he doesn't see, you know, the external body, but he or she sees the soul and doesn't discriminate. And similarly among the animals. You know, from like this verse from the Bhagavad Gita uses the example of dogs. Because in Vedic and traditional Indian culture, dogs are considered some sort of somewhat unclean animals. And cows are considered to be much more clean and useful for human society. And so again the spiritualist sees equally the dog or the cow or the elephant or the cockroach or the ant or the mosquito I love to tell this story of Prabhupada who was told by one of his uh, disciples who is still living in Los Angeles uh, I'm friends with, with his daughter Shakuntala and and he tells the story how once he was in he was sitting in front of Prabhupada who was sitting in front of a desk and Prabhupada told him Nara Narayan is his name he said do you see this ant on the table and actually according to Nara Narayan there was no ant like <laughs> there was nothing on the table but he wanted to be respectful towards Prabhupada because you know if you look at it, historically people had so much respect for Prabhupada he was such a charismatic powerful person so so he didn't want to come to, he said mm, like he didn't want to say no I don't see it but he didn't want to say yes and lie so he kind of he said mm, like kind of you know and Prabhupada said so you see this ant we should be thinking how can we help this ant to make spiritual advancement because the vision of a, of a, of a pure soul is to see, okay, it doesn't, you know, it's an ant body, but in the eyes of God, it's the, it's the spiritual person inside. And that spiritual person inside has as much value as the spiritual soul inside a human body. And that soul needs God as much as a soul in a human body or in a tree body. So he said, you know, how can I make, how, how, he said, uh, maybe we should chant Hare Krishna to it. <laughs> and and he, he according to Narayan, he bent down towards the ant, towards the imaginary, like invisible ant, and, and started singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And then he said, well, maybe maybe we could give it some some prasadam. You know the idea of spiritual food, like food offered to God is blessed. We call it prasadam, and by eating spiritual food we make spiritual advancements. So maybe we could give it some prasadam. And then he said, if we can help this one ant, who wasn't even on the table, he said, if we can make this one ant, if we can help this one ant to advance towards Krishna or God, he said, our entire movement is a, is a glorious success. So that's equality. That's equality. Seeing every being as spiritually or metaphysically equal. Right? So, égalité, fraternité, uh, égalité, liberté, égalité, fraternité, same sort of thing. You, you, you see not just, you know, oh, it's my family. My family and everybody else is an enemy. Or, you know, like, maybe, you know, 50 years, 100 years ago, or 70 years ago, or, you know, yeah, or maybe 50 years ago, you know, the Serbs and the Croats. Right, it's a good example. Like, my, you know, my Serbs, you know, against the Croats. Right? Or you see with, you know, Islamic terrorism, you know, those who don't accept, you know, Muhammad, you know, we're going to just blow them up, you know. Like we see in, you know, the terrorist uh, 
attacks we, we saw, we keep seeing, you know, in the Western world. Or the Protestants against the Catholics. I mean, the, 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 the human carnage that took place, for example, in France, like all the, you know, the Catholics killed thousands and thousands and thousands of Protestants. So, you know, the list is long where you, you, you stop seeing others as your brother or your sister. You forget this one point, and which is what? That there's ultimately one, only one family in the entire universe. In the Bhagavad Gita, God says... I am the father of all living entities. Of all living entities, I am the father. He also says, I am the mother. So, if we take those words seriously, then there's really just one big family. Beyond Karat or, her, or Sir, beyond, you know, Protestant or Catholic, beyond black or white, beyond all the, you know, beyond fish or tree or, or insect, itakodali, itakodali. So when you have a vision of where, when you, you see God as the supreme father of all forms of life, then, then naturally you feel a sense of, of brotherhood or sisterhood with people outside your family, outside your race, outside your country, outside your continent, outside your species. So that's the Bhagavad Gita on liberté, égalité, fraternité. You want to add something? I would like to thank you for a wonderful presentation. Hare Krishna. It's, so, it's, it's, it's very clear and uh, how to say very well uh, presented with uh, relevant analogies, analogies. Analogies? Yeah. And uh, I think it's very educative. Although I'm uh, reading about this daily and preaching, it's very inspiring to, to hear from this point of view. I still would have preferred to speak about Sean Mendes and Justin. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much. And I agree with Sundala. I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> all glories to Srinivas Acharya. I mean, yeah, all glories to the great Acharyas, all the great saints. And I believe it's a lot by their mercy that, uh, you know, even like very, very, uh, yeah, very fallen souls can still, I guess, say something that inspires a little bit. That's really a miracle. That's my conclusion. Jai. Shula Prabhupada ki jai. Shunivasa Acharya ki jai. Janantananjai Pandit ki jai. Gadadar Das Pandit ki jai. Hare Krishna. Well. I'm supposed to cook instead of translating. So now Should we do a kirtan? Make miracles. Should we yeah. stop the video here? Yeah? You can stop. Yeah. Hold up. Unless you will talk about